Hey guys, Bob McBride, Black Powder TV. Please run over to the National Muzzleloader Rifle Association's website, Facebook page, and check them out. If you're not a member, you should really consider being one. They do an awful lot for the black powder community. They make videos, they've got a YouTube channel, they're putting stuff on their Facebook all the time. They put on two great shoots every single year, spring and fall in Friendship, Indiana. The spring shoot and the fall national championship shoot. Thousands of shooters show up. It's unbelievable amount of stuff for shooters, so you can get whatever you want while you're there. It's a week bookend by two weekends, so it's a nice long shoot. My wife and I go every year, we love it. It's a great place to go, it's a great place to meet other black powder shooters, so please check them out. If you're not already a member, please consider signing up and, and helping our hobby and helping people like us do the things that we love to do. Today, we're doing part one in our low development series for the brand new 36 caliber Southern style squirrel rifle that I just finished, and you guys have seen this rifle before. So this, is, this rifle was built from a Kibler Southern Mountain Rifle kit, and I'll put the information for Jim Kibler and his kits and uh, links below. We're gonna get started on getting this rifle ready for squirrel season, ready for shooting my string of little one and a half inch AR500 targets on the range and we're gonna get a super, super precise load developed for this gun. So obviously, if you're shooting squirrels or you're shooting little tiny targets or you're shooting for clover leaves or single holes at, at 30 yards, then this thing has to be dialed in perfectly. So what we're gonna do for dialing that in is we're gonna run through all the possible powder, ball, patch combinations and find out which is the absolute optimum load. And then we're also gonna be on the lookout for a load that is the same or similar with a lighter patched ball combination, and I'll get into that in a second. So we're gonna get out on the range. We're gonna go through 1F, 2F, 3F, 4F powders. I'm really interested in 1F in these smalls for the lower pressures in conjunction with a less tight patch ball combination. So we're gonna run through all the powders. We're gonna run through 0.350 balls, 0.345 balls, 0.343 balls with the patches at 0 0.015, 0 0.018, 0 0.020, and 0 0.025 probably. So we're gonna take all of those possible combinations, we're gonna go to the range, we're gonna find the absolute most accurate load for this gun, and then we're gonna come back in the shop and we're gonna cone the barrel. So this is a coning tool for hand coning. We're gonna cone the barrel, which is to relieve the barrel at the muzzle on the inside and give it a slight taper so we can thumb load that patch ball combination without a short starter. So putting the, the short starter on, knocking it down, then putting the long leg of the starter and running it down four or five inches so you can get going. We wanna see if we can develop a load that can be used without a short starter that is as precise, is the most precise load unconed. So that's what we're after in this series. Like I said, we're gonna start with getting the rifle prepped for going to the range. And, and the, the rifles that I use that need the most precision that I really dial in tight, I do this prep work prior. I usually do it on most of the rifles, but, but some of the big bore stuff that, that I'm deer hunting and, and I need a group like this at, at 75 yards, I'm not looking to, to spend you know a month going from here to here. So those I kind of leave alone, but stuff like the squirrel rifle that my target is that big, I need the absolute perfect load. I need clover leaves or better. We're going to develop that. So starting out, we're going to get this rifle down. And I know you guys have seen this before, but it's basically ready to go now. So those are sight shades. You get out there in the sun, you get out in the bright and your front and rear sight are shaded and you're not gonna get glare, especially on the front sight. The sun's over here, it's glaring off the right side of the front sight. It makes you think that that glare is the center of the front sight and you're gonna be using your point of aim too far to the right. Same with the sun being on the other side. So that gives you variation that you don't want. And so we're shading this um, front and rear sight on this squirrel rifle. So I'm gonna pop these off. They're just pressured on because they'll be a little bit in the way for this. We're gonna start out by crowning the barrel and we're just, we're not gonna do a super precise one. We wanna take the sharp edges off. The way this crown is, is you've got the end of the barrel and then it cuts in at about a 45 and at the bottom of that 45 is when the rifling starts and goes on down. So it's got a little bit of a crown on there. But what that does is give you, gives you two rings of angled steel. And the, the, the one ring on the absolute end of the barrel and the next one as it transitions from 
from that crown, from that angle, into the rifling. And that's two little areas of fairly sharp steel that will catch your patch and tear it or make it hard to start or any of that stuff. So you want that transition as smooth as you can get starting your ball. Even, even once we have it crowned, you don't want it to catch anything as you, as you push that in. But mainly, we're doing this for um, the uncombed section of this test, which is gonna be using a short starter to get this started. So we want this to be as easy to load as possible. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna lean the rifle right here, and I'm gonna start out with uh, 220 sandpaper, and I'm gonna go to 400 to polish it off. This is not uh, a big deal. I'm not taking off a lot of metal. I'm taking those sharp edges and just breaking the edge. So we'll cut off a couple of pieces of sandpaper. And we'll start with the rougher grit. Let's take this ramrod out. This is just called thumb crowning. The small bore, like a 36 caliber, you know, you want to use your pinky or one of your smaller fingers, but you're just pushing it, conforming that sandpaper into the crown and turning. Now I would normally do this with the barrel off, but these Southern mountain rifles with that long lollipop tang, if I put this in a vise with the barrel out and I get going on this stuff and that barrel slips and that tang bends, it's never gonna be the same again. I'm never gonna get it back right for the inlet on the rifle. So I'm not gonna do that at all. I'm just gonna set it on a piece of cardboard, on the carpet, and twist. So just a, a steady thumb pressure, and I'm gonna twist that till it looks like that edge is broken. Not much, not much and I've broken that edge. So that's what we're gonna do right there. And then we're gonna get the fine sandpaper, the 400, and we're just gonna give it a couple polished twists. And we're gonna, oh yeah, I nicely rounded off those sharp angles. And so that's nice and smooth. So you're not gonna re really be able to see this, but this outside edge right here is, is now smooth. I run my finger on it, it's not sharp. And, and another thing you're getting rid of there is any kind of burrs. And the burrs are what we're worried about down the barrel. So as you load these heavy patch ball or these tight patch ball combinations and you run down a brand new barrel, there's gonna be micro burrs along the rifling edges down that barrel. And as you start loading these combinations and all these micro burrs start catching your patch after it's dirty, you're gonna have problems, you're gonna get stuck, you're gonna have all these issues with it not wanting to, to load smoothly. So the next thing we're gonna do is get rid of the micro burrs in the barrel. So set this rifle here, and what, what you do with that is, is you use Scotch-Brite. So I've got some Scotch-Brite, some Burgundy Scotch-Brite. This is fairly rough Scotch-Brite, and it's gonna be kind of 30 passes, 50 passes, something like that, to really polish that bore as good as we can. So what I've done is I went ahead and cut some squares and they're about three quarter inch squares and then I snipped the edges off because this 36 caliber is really, really tight to get into. So you don't need any extra at all on there to get in. If you're doing like a 58, I mean, you can do an inch and a half, inch and a half, and then put a jag on there, say it's 58, put a 50 caliber jag on there and it'll, it's tight, but it'll conform to the jag and run down and you can really scour that bore. But it's tricky with the 36 because it's so small. So what we want to do, oh, let me, let me show you this real quick. The, um, the range rod that I'm going to use, I don't have a small enough jag, like, you know, 25 caliber, 30 caliber jag, 30 might even be too big, um, because with the Scotch-Brite on, the, on the, the jag that's designed for that bore, there's just not enough room for the Scotch-Brite on either side um, as it conforms to the jag and run down. You'll never get it down. So what I did is I took my range rod and I attached an adapter so I've got the, what is that? That's the 1032 on this side, threads, and then like shotgun threads or, or really large threads. So I'm gonna screw that on and we're gonna get our trusty bear grease. And we're gonna get our finger in there and we're gonna really grease this up. Not sopping, but we want all the help we can get getting this thing down the bore because it's gonna be tight. So we get the rifle again, that's gonna go right in there. 
And just like loading a patch round ball, you're going to get it up here. And we're using that screw so we don't lose the uh, scotch brite down the board. So let's get started. And there we go. So like I said, super tough on these small calibers, but, but we're going to run that down. And we're really just working on getting those micro burrs out of there and knocking off any burrs from, from the uh, cutting of the, of the rifling. So we need to make sure we get the, uh, the very end here as good as we can because that's where you get started. All the way down, back out. We're going to turn that over. It's already kind of compressed a little bit, so it's going to make it easier to get down. And we're going to get that started. I'm going to use the ceiling to help out there. So you can see that kind of conformed to the um, conformed to the bore and really got in there and scoured that rifling up. All right. So I'm gonna do that one more time. We're gonna run that down. Particularly, I mean, I'm concerned about the, the whole length of the barrel, but this end here, getting started, getting your first swing down and getting the, the patch ball going, we need to, um, to get that worked out really well as well. All right. So we've done another one, got our hands filthy, but we should have gotten most, if not all of those micro burrs out of there. And that's what we're looking for. So let's put this up. Now we're gonna run a regular cleaning jag down to pick up all those filings. So same thing, some bear grease on there. And get our rifle. And we're gonna go right down the bore with the patch. And we're gonna do this until we're back clean. So we're now ready to get this thing to the range. So part two is gonna be out at the range. We've got the, uh, this side, we've got the new chronograph. So every shot will be chronographed because we wanna see the difference in our, our velocities that we get with the different powders, different patch ball combinations. Or we get the same powder, but two different size patch ball combinations. We wanna see what our pressure differential is. If we, if we are using a 1F powder with the same patch ball combination, we wanna see what the differential is and also how far we have to go up with the coarser grain powder to get the same uh, uh, velocities if we can do that. So we're gonna be playing with matching velocities, playing with lower velocities and, and what that means for our groupings and all of that. So we'll be doing all of that in part two, which should come out next week, maybe middle of next week. So maybe it won't be a whole week depending on the weather and we'll be out there and we'll start um, popping holes in paper and seeing if we can't get this thing dialed in. We'll be back in the shop after that to crown the barrel, I'm sorry, to cone the barrel. And so I'll show you how you do that with this tool and I'll also tell you where I get this tool from. It's a tapered piece of brass. You, um, you wrap it in sandpaper, subsequent grits of sandpaper, goes down into the, into the bore and it gives you the correct taper and this is twisted um, now you tighten this jag up so you're, you know you're centered you know, with, a, uh, with a patch, so you absolutely know you're centered in there before you start cutting this cone in the barrel. So we'll get the cone cut in and then we'll head back outside, do it all over again and see exactly what differences that coning has made and if we've lost accuracy, if there's a combination that will give us the same accuracy as the best combination that we found prior to coning it. So that's a big thing. A lot of people do not cone the barrels because they say that the accuracy is not there after it's coned. These are, these are bench shooters. These are guys who are shooting at the NMLRA 
Friendship Championship shoot in the fall in Friendship, Indiana, and they're serious about every little thing. And to them, a cone barrel is a variable that they don't need. They're gonna, they're gonna start with a short, uh, short starter anyway, so they don't need that variable thrown into the mix. Me, on the other hand, I hunt in the woods, I shoot in the woods, I shoot from the bag. If I can get rid of the short starter and not lose any accuracy, then that's exactly what I wanna do. So this is a test. If, if, if it goes wrong and we can't get the same accuracy after it's been coned, then I'm gonna be calling Jim Kibler and getting a new barrel and going back to scrap. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully we can find a nice load for this rifle coned so I can run my powder down patch ball, thumb start it with the cone, because that's what it's for, no, no short starter. You wanna be able to thumb start your ball, get the ramrod off the rifle, and run that load down, and know that I'm going to hit a target that big, squirrel's head size, right, um, out to 30, 40 yards. So reaching out there, I wanna hit something like that, and I wanna do it easy, and I wanna skip the short starter. So in subsequent videos, we're gonna find out if we can accomplish that. So. Don't go away, come back for the next video. If you haven't already subscribed, if you haven't already liked this video, please do so. At the end of this video, um, I'll put the next video so you can transition from one to the other as I get them made. So video's coming, thanks guys, appreciate it. We'll see you next time, bye-bye.